Hey, what's up? Andrew here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to live stream on X. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come to this website, studio.twitter.com slash producer slash sources. Okay. So once you head there, this is the place where we're going to create a stream key. Now, the stream key that I'm about to create is going to be a public stream key, but it will not be my stream key. Okay. So usually when you're doing tutorials like this, websites hide it, but Twitter X does not, but we're going to walk through it. Okay. So first thing you want to do is you want to create a source and then we're going to name it X streaming. Again, this is not going to be my stream key. And then we're going to select RTMP for the source type. And then from here, you select the region as closest to you. Uh, so for me, we could use US East North Virginia. Okay. We're going to create. All right. So now that has been created. Uh, we can actually see the recommended encoder settings uh, for whether you use OBS or if you use Streamlabs OBS. These are the things that you have to pay attention to when you're setting it up. Okay, so you have AAC uh, 41 uh, for the sampling rate. Audio bit rate is 128 kilobytes per second. Uh, two audio channels, H264, and you have 9000 bit rate. Uh, they have 30 frames here, but I use 60 frames, which is fine. And then you have the key interval at three. And then my resolution is 1920 by 1080. So be mindful of that. Okay. So as you're setting up your, your setup on your side. Okay. So we're going to hit done here. And the next screen we want to go into is the screen that shows the stuff for OBS. And it's going to be very similar for using either Streamlabs OBS or OBS. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into settings for Streamlabs OBS. And I'm going to show you the settings that I currently use when I'm streaming on X. Okay. And that rhyme. All right. So let's just go to settings. And then so for stream, I have custom streaming server. And then we're going to add the URL that we got from the website. Okay. So I'm going to go to the website here and i'm going to grab this url and this is the url that you're going to put in your streaming software okay so we're going to go back there and then we're going to add that to here and then the stream key that you created we're going to add that from the website as well okay so the stream key i have is this one here starting with e5 okay we're going to copy that and then we're going to add that to the OBS. Okay. Once I get over there. Okay. So we're going to add that to the OBS right here. Okay. So once you have that notice that it hides it here in OBS and usually in other streaming software, it does hide it, but for whatever reason, they don't hide it in Twitter. They should. That's definitely something that they should consider, you know, updating on the back end of things. So notice it hides the stream key, right? But it is a stream key that you copied over which is the one that you created, not necessarily the E5 that I created, right? So this is what it looks like. Okay. And then from there, I want to show you what I have for output, which I think is important. So for output, we're going to go there. Now, one thing you could do for output is keep it very simple. You can have it on the simple settings at 9,000 uh, for the bit rate. You have the encoder to uh, the NVENC if you have the option for NVENC. And then 128 kilobytes per second. I have it on max quality here. And then from there, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I wanted to show you the settings for the advanced when you're in output mode. Okay, so you go to output mode. And if you're using the advanced settings, uh, you have advanced here, a uh, one audio track. You have NVIDIA and VANC H264. If you have the option to use that, select that. Uh, constant bit rate right here. 9000 bit rate right here for for that based on the recommendations that they gave and then notice the keyframe interval i have it matching what they recommended you know in the producer section max quality here high profile i have look look ahead checked a cycle visual tuning checked and i also have my b frames at four okay so those are the settings that i have so if we go back to that screen just gonna go back here where we have this stream key that i'm not going to be using okay so now we're going to go to the recommended settings. We have the B frames. You have the, we have the key frames at uh, three right here, which matches what we have in Streamlabs OBS. OK, so these are the settings that you can use for advanced. And we also did the settings uh, for simple. 
All right, so now that we have our stream key, we have the URL, we set up everything in OBS or Streamlabs OBS, depending on where you stream. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up, we're going to create a broadcast, okay? So we're going to hit create broadcast. And then from here, we're going to add uh, the title and then we're going to add the category. So for me, I'm going to use digital creators and then we're going to pick the source that we set up. Okay, so X streaming. And then here is going to populate uh, the stream key that you created, right? And then the URL that you have for that's nearest, you know, for you, right? So we have all that information in here. And then again, for the sake of this video, the stream key doesn't really exist because I'm going to delete it once the video goes live. Okay. Even before that. Okay. So public audience or private audience, depending on what you decide to choose there. Uh, chat, you could have no one verified my subscribers accounts I follow or everyone, depending on, you know, who you want to chat in your chat. Okay. Hearts, you can have those on or off. You can have the stream start immediately or start later. Now, interestingly enough, if you hit start later, you have more options in terms of it's, if it's going to be recurring, you can add an actual thumbnail. Okay. So for advanced options, you can do an encryption for your stream, which I don't usually go into these settings, but you can also restrict the content where it's going to be. You could where it's going to be included or excluded. So you have the options to do that. And then the recommended encoder settings, once you hit go live on your streaming software and the stuff starts populating here, it's going to show you the current settings when you go live. And what you want is to make sure that those settings are as close as possible to the recommended settings so you can have a great experience on your stream. Okay. So that's what you want. All right. So now for me, I don't usually do a start later. I usually do a start immediately. So you're not going to have an option to create a thumbnail. Okay. So content restrictions, I usually don't necessarily go down in these particular sections, but I just wanted to let you know what happens here by way of the, the population stuff. Okay. So then, so then whatever scene that you have on your OBS or your Streamlabs OBS, when you hit go live on the streaming software, that scene is going to pop up in this view window here. Okay. And this preview. All right. And then once you hit create broadcast, that broadcast is going to be live to the world. Okay. So just, just know that's, that's what's going to happen. Okay. And then from there, I think it's going to give you option to tweet it out and then you can go from there.